Hello, that's the new kitty, Henrietta. If you hear somebody meowing loudly. She seems to have adopted us for however long she wants to adopt us. She's a Siamese. Maybe someday she'll be friendly enough to jump in my lap. Okay, the arithmetic of logarithms. Remember that logarithms are the inverse function of exponential functions. And they're very, very important because exponential functions grow so fast, so quickly, that any kind of measurement is, is difficult to do because the numbers get so big so quickly. So we have to depend on the logarithms because they grow more slowly. So we can measure. The measuring is done over on the y-axis. You know, how big is fill in the blank? OK, so here I have, we're going to do this problem. This is the first problem in your homework, this is number one. But explanations first. I've um, written a whole bunch of numbers here. This is 3 to the 5th, 7 to the 8th, 2 to the negative 1 power, 5 to the 11th power, 2 thirds to the 4th power, 13 to the 1 half power. Um, these numbers are actually made up of two levels. There's the base level, the bases are the big numbers that hold up the exponents. This is the exponent level. These are the numbers we're used to dealing with in daily life down on the base level. So if we go over, we are going to go over now the basic rules of exponents which we've got over a bunch of times this um, semester because they're so necessary. Okay, well, let's go over first the product rule. X to the A times X to the B equals X to the A plus b. And here's an example. Um, yeah, let's, we could even use a number. How about that? How revolutionary. How about 3 to the 2 times 3 to the 3? The bases are the same. So you write the base once and you add the exponents, two plus three, which is five, of course. Let's write that, three to the fifth power. Okay, there's a matching logarithm rule called the product rule of logarithms. Now, last, last time, on Monday, we went over the structure of logarithms and how to change back and forth, how to convert back and forth between exactly equivalent um, exponential equations and logarithmic equations. So by now, I hope you're, you're familiar with the basic structure of a logarithm. A log to any base. If in the argument you have two numbers or letters or whatever. That are multiplied together. That's going to equal log to any base. That is log to this base. 
times A plus log to that same base, has to be the same base, times C. And here is an example. How about log base three? Well, let's change that. Log base seven of two times four. Or better yet, because you could just say eight, couldn't you? So let's do this. How about log base seven of two X? of 2x, log base 7 of 2x. That's log base 7 of 2 plus log base 7 of x, whatever x is. So you have the product rule of exponents and the product rule of logarithms. Logarithms live up here on the exponent level. So if you can imagine what these rules, uh, the exponent rules would look like if you were an exponent living up here, this is what they would be. Okay, and now remember the exponent rules are true going back the other way. Um, for instance, three to the fifth power can be broken down into three to the two times three to the three. Or three to the one times three to the four. 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5. So it's true going back the other way. Over here, if you have something like log base 7 of 2 plus log base 7 of x, then you can push these together you can you can smoosh them, if you will, into log base seven of two x. So you can go either way. You can go from log base seven of two x equals log base seven of two plus log base seven of x, or you can go the other way. It depends on what you start with and what the um, instructions ask you to do. Okay, first rule. Usually the first rule you meet. Now, the uh, power rule. Of exponents. Is written in a formula way, if you have x, a base, raised to a power, and raised to a power again, you multiply the two powers together. Over here, you have a similar rule for logarithm. Oh, let me find, yeah. Suppose you have a base three and it's squared and then raised to the third power. Well, that would be three to the two times three, which would be three to the six. And then over here in logarithms, we have a very similar rule. If you have a log to any base, of a number a raised to the c power, then what you do is you bring the c down in front and it multiplies 
log base B of A. And you can go the other way. But let's change this to numbers first. Suppose I have log base 7 of 2 to the third power. That could be written as 3 times log base 7 of 2. And sometimes, if you start out like this, life becomes more convenient, as you'll see on Monday, if we take that three and turn it into an exponent. Log base 7 of 2 to the third power. And that would be log base 7 of 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So you have to get used to these. Over here, you could still do the same thing. If you start out with 3 to the 6 and there was some reason that you wanted to break it down, you could go backwards and say, well, OK, I could write this as. Three raised to the two power and then. All that raised to the third power. If for some reason it suited you to do it, you needed to be able to do it. Now these are ideal for flashcards. You probably get tired of me saying that, but it's true. Okay, now we have the quotient rule. And suppose you have a base and it's raised to the A power and you've got a base and it's raised to the C power. You would write that, notice they have the same bases. The bases have to be the same. X to the A minus C. Use minus when you're when you're dividing, like bases. So for instance, we might have uh, three to the two over three to the three is three to the two minus three, which is three to the negative one, which is one over three to the positive one which would just be one third. Or if you have three to the third power, let's make it different, three to the fifth power over three to the second power, that would be three to the five minus two, which is three to the third power, which is, by the way, 27. And that's with exponents. And just stuff, just stuff you've done. Now we're applying it to logarithms. Logarithms live up on the exponent level. If you have the log to any base, any kind of log, and in the argument of the function, you have division going on. Then this is going to equal log base B of A 
minus log base B of C. Okay, so an example of this. Well, first, let's look back at the product rule. If you have log base B of two numbers or letters or a combination thereof that are multiplied together, that becomes log base B of the first number, excuse me, plus log base B of the second number. Well, here we have division going on. So log base B of A minus log base B of C. And an example might be log base 7. Of 3 fourths. And for some reason it suited you to write it. This way. Or going back the other way, if you have log base 7 of 3 minus log base 7 of 4, well, you could condense those, you could smush them into being log base 7 of 3 fourths. Kitty, kitty, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, these are the three basic rules you're going to be working with. Along with, I don't know what the name of this is, but suppose you have a number. Raised to the power one. Well, that's just the number, right? So if you've got three to the one, that's just three. Not really higher math. Well, we have the same kind of rule over here in logarithms. If you've got a log to any base of that same number in the argument, then the answer is one. Because remember, what we have here, 1 is the exponent, b is the base, b to the 1 power, of course it's going to equal b. What else could it equal? Okay. So, putting it into these terms, suppose you have log base 3 of 3. Well, that's one. Okay. So logarithms live up here. Regular numbers live down here. Regular meaning rational numbers, the ones we're used to dealing with. The ones you first learn about when you're a little kid. Okay. So here we go, we're going to apply these rules to the following logarithmic expressions. Here we have log to base six, 
and in the argument we have two numbers that are multiplied together. That's going to give us log base 6, 6, that's a 6, of 36, plus log base 6, of 13. If I remember, the last thing we're going to do is come back to this and rewrite it. Well, we might as well. We could do it now. You know that 36 is 6 squared. So using the rules of logarithms, we would have log base 6 of 6 squared plus log base 6 of 13. We can use the power rule to bring the 2 down in front. We'll have 2 times log base 6 of 6 plus log base 6 of 13. What is log base 6 of 6? We just learned it, it's 1. This whole thing here, log base 6 of 6 is 1. So this is 2 times 1 plus, well this doesn't change, log base 6 of 13. So the final answer is going to be 2 plus log base 6 of 13. Let me put a blue box around that. Okay, <clears throat> number two in your homework is the same rule. This is the product rule going back the other way. You have to learn to recognize them. So actually, I suppose I should write that. Wait a minute. This is the product rule. And this is the product rule. Log base t of 8 plus log base t of 27. That means you're going to have log base t of 8 times 27. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. 8 times 27 is 216. So log base t of 216. All right, the product rule. Very straightforward. I kind of think of this as the product rule going forward and the product rule going backwards. But of course, it's just equivalency. But when you're a student, you start thinking these things. And it's as good a way to think of it as any other. The plus sign tips you off. Oh, must be the product rule. Okay. Means the arguments are being multiplied. That times that. That becomes the new argument. 
And just for review, this is red log. I'm, I'm going to write the words log base T of two sixteen. Those are the words you use when you say this log base T of two sixteen. Okay. Ooh, we've got a power, so it must be the power rule. I always thought of this as being the really strange one because you take the exponent and bring it down in front. So you're going to have negative nine times log base P of R. And that's all there is to that. Let's make this a tad bigger, shall we? To make sure that you can see this. This is log base P of R to the negative nine. I wanna write it again in case you can't see it. Log base P of R to the negative nine equals negative nine times log base P of R. And I write parentheses for two reasons. One, I was taught to always write parentheses with credit taken off if I didn't. Always put parentheses around the argument. My math lab doesn't force you to do that um, most of the time unless you have more than one term like things. Well, we'll see. Um, um, another reason is that your calculator forces you to close all your parentheses or it will give you the wrong answer. So remember that too. All right, here, here we have an argument, G over nine, that's division. log base r of g over nine. This is the quotient rule. Log base r of g, if they write a capital G, you have to write a capital G. If they write a lowercase r, you write a lowercase r. That's the way mathematics and science is. If you take a science class, you'll see a big G and a little g used for different purposes. So you have to make it clear which you, which you are using. You'll have a big M and a little m and they're used for different purposes. So be careful to do that. Um, minus log base R of the denominator. Log, log, log base R of nine. And that's all you type. Remember, this is a subscript, okay? So you're gonna be using the subscript button in my math lab. These are on, the argument is on the same level as the log. All right, here we have an argument that has 
17z in it. 17z is 17 times z. That's the product rule. Remembering the names of the rules helps you remember what to do. Log base 9 of 17 plus log base 9 of Z. That's it. Same thing here. Except we have LN, but LN is just a log. Remember the LN, LN of YZ is just, I didn't need those, is just log base E of YZ. So it's just a log. E is a number that's about 2.7. But the decimal part goes on forever. It's irrational, just like pi. Pi is about 3.14, E is about 2.7. They're called universal constants. So the ln of yz equals the ln of y plus the ln of z. Ta -da! And this too is the product rule. And here we have the power rule. Log, no base, base 10. If you don't see a base down here, then the log is log base 10. The log of n to the 14th power equals 14 times the log of n. Period. The power rule. And here we have the power rule again, right below it. Just giving you practice with the basic problems before you have to go to the harder problems. It makes sense to do that. Here's your exponent, negative 10. Log base A, capital A, of lowercase t raised to the negative 10 power is negative 10 times log base A of lowercase t. All right, and that's the power rule. And then we have two quotient rules here. Quotient. And while I'm at it, quotient rule. All right, up here, the log of D over N equals the log of D minus the log of N. Again, no base means you really do have a base of 10. Down here, same thing before we move on to harder stuff. We have the ln of m over w equals the ln of m minus the ln of w. All 
Okay, the best thing, the best thing, the best thing, the best thing you could do for yourself is to get flashcards and write these rules and these basic problems on it. And then look at them over and over and over again. So, do you want to discuss any of this before we start applying multiple rules to the same problem? No. Okay. You certainly know how to get in touch with me. All right, we get bigger again then. Here we have, I think this is problem number 13, but I'm not sure. So I think it's problem number 13. But I, no, I shouldn't write it if I'm not sure. 